Hi friends, Michael Essek here. Uh, in this video, I just want to dive into something called Synth ID, which you may not be aware of, but in the latest AI image generation models, for example, Google's uh, Nano Banana Pro, uh, there's something called Synth ID, which is a, a watermarking feature for all images that are generated with the AI. So if you generate an image directly in like Google Gemini, as you can see here, um, they add a, a visible watermark. There's a little logo right at the bottom there. That's a, a watermark that comes from um, Google that when you're generating an image via the AI here in Gemini, it adds that visibly on. Uh, but what you may not know is that actually if you're creating images using Google's new Nano Banana or even the previous Nano Banana, they also add a watermarking feature. It's just that you can't visibly see the watermark. And the watermark is something called Synth ID. It's Google's own uh, technology that embeds a watermark that's undetectable. So humans can't see it, but uh, computers can. And in particular, Google's got this technology where they can check whether an image is AI generated or not. So obviously that's an interesting development and that's you can see obviously why they've done that because of all the deep fakes and stuff like that that are going on. Um, but just one, I just wanted to, I've been thinking about this and what this could mean. Obviously what this does mean, and I've tested this now with a, a few different ways. So I've generated images, for example, in my software Ideally, and we use Nano Banana and other AI models. Uh, but yeah, let's say we've generated an image here with Google's Nano Banana, and uh, yeah, you can you can upload it to Gemini to check, to ask it, does it have this synth ID, and it will say yes, it does. I can see, you know, I can run it against the synth ID uh, settings or whatever, and can see that this has got uh, this was AI generated. Now this is the case with the original generated image from Nano Banana Pro also when you uh, edit that image. So I've done edits such as changing the colors, I've removed backgrounds, um, I've upscaled, and uh, this watermark, this synth ID is there, is still detectable after all these different steps. So this synth ID, this watermark is definitely um, embedded in such a way that, you know, significant editing can uh, doesn't change the fact that Google can still detect it, that this it can still say, yes, this is an AI generated image, even after some significant um, edits. Now, obviously, I didn't like redraw the design. I didn't do any like I didn't add anything onto it. I just did things like change the colors, remove the background. Uh, the essential nature of the image stayed the same. So that's interesting. Um, even things like removing the background and, for example, turning it into a PNG, which obviously if you're doing like print on demand, that's what you're doing. You're, or that's what you need to do. You need to take an AI image or you need to take an artwork image and you need to get a PNG with a background removed. Even in that case, it can still say, yes, this is AI. And the reason I spotted this first was actually I uploaded some example images onto LinkedIn um, earlier this week. Uh, when Nano Banana Pro came out and LinkedIn put a little logo on it and said, this is AI generated. And uh, that got me thinking, oh, this is interesting. Obviously, LinkedIn are using some uh, system, some API call to check. They're obviously able to tap into the synth ID thing and see that this is indeed AI generated. And that got me thinking, well, if LinkedIn can do this, how long before, you know, print on demand, how long before Redbubble or Amazon or Etsy, or T Public, or anywhere, uh, even, for example, some something like uh, Chrome. Can you see that? <laughs> Chrome could build in, uh, you know, AI generation tools into their software and say this image is AI generated. And that's interesting. Obviously, we're not seeing this rolling out yet. Um, and there's a couple of, I think, ways to consider. Whoops, a couple of ways to consider how exactly this would. Uh, pan out in practice. Let me just plug my iPad back in there and see if I can get back. So a couple of ways to think about this, um, maybe what might happen. Um, I'll give you a couple of looking into the future 
predictions. So option one, um, I guess nothing. <laughs> so obviously uh, you've got a lot of designers using AI directly out of the box right now um, for designs, for POD, for stuff like that. Um, option one is, I guess, nothing, you know, things continue as they are. Obviously people, individuals and, and people can take images. So you could take artwork from Redbubble if you wanted to check it and see if it was AI generated. But um, option one would be, okay, the platforms platforms themselves don't do anything about it. They're quite happy and relaxed about it. Option two would be something kind of like a uh, midpoint where there's some kind of awareness of it, like, uh, you know, a little logo that says this is AI generated, maybe appears on certain products. And that would be um, uh, obviously that would be just kind of like openness on, on behalf of the platforms. Uh, you know, if you're Redbubble or you're Amazon or something, you they may come under some political pressure or otherwise to to let people know that certain products are AI generated or the designs are AI generated or something like that. Now, you got to remember, like we're talking here about POD. Uh, in general, the reason Google and others have put you know this technology into the AI generation is because they're worried about things like deep fakes and you know scams and just people generally doing. Uh, evil stuff with uh, with AI generation. It's not going to be, um, you know, I don't see the same amount of like political pressure or something on Etsy or Amazon or whatever to, to do this kind of thing. But I think it's fair to say that this could be something that comes down the track in the future. And then an even more extreme version would be something like, obviously some platforms may say, hey, you know, we don't want um, AI at all. So a complete ban option of like platforms saying no we don't want any ai on our on our platform so you we just don't want it or a uh, kind of alternative to this would be that um someone like google would say um we you know we we know this image is ai generated we are the ultimate generator of it and therefore, we want to strike a deal or something with a platform to, you know, to get some of those royalties or something like that. Again, that's probably the, we're probably going like likely to unlikely um, on here. But that, that could be something that happens. And the other thing that's just worth bearing in mind as well is um, there are cases in courts right now. This is my little courthouse drawing um, that are going on. On the big AI question in general, there was the big stable diffusion one uh, with Getty images recently, uh, which basically kind of went in the AI in stable diffusion's favor for now. But there are ones in the States which are happening and in progress, and we don't know what's going to happen with those. So it could be the case, and there's there's certainly you know still ongoing legal questions about whether AI image generation models, um, you know, at all, whether obviously they're trained on copyrighted artwork, just just millions and millions and billions of images uh, scraped from the internet. Is that legitimate? Is that legal? Is there any recourse for all the artists that have had their work scraped in order to, you know, make AI image generation a thing that can happen? Um, so, is there a case? Is there going to be? Could there be some legal? Uh, you know, things that come up that haven't simply haven't yet uh, made it to the court and haven't yet been decided on where this synth ID thing comes into play, where the, you know, maybe the courts say, hey, yeah, this is not, this is not right. You know, all these artists, they've had their stuff scraped. We're going to, uh, uh, we're going to set up some kind of fund that, uh, I don't know, could be something like the Spotify kind of model as a big fund of money and artists get some percentage, I, you know, don't know. It sounds to me like this is, again, on the unlikely scale, but it's worth considering that down the line, there could be something that says, uh, look, if an image is AI generated, then, you know, percentage of that belongs either to the, 
the AI models, probably unlikely, like the Googles of the world or the open AIs. But maybe there's some kind of funding that has to go to artists via some kind of fund. And again, don't know how this would possibly be administered, but I just think it's worth bearing that in mind that once you have this synth ID thing in place, once you have some kind of technology that does make things traceable, that does say, okay, the governance of this image is, it was AI generated. We know that we can, with the with the Google one, it says this was made by Google. Then you have traceability and things like legal recourse, um, things like yeah, uh, you know, royalty splits or something like that. And of course, things like we just spoke about, like possible bans or things like that are potential things that could happen. So that's just me spitballing a couple of things about this whole thing. What does it mean for you? Uh, Obviously, I am a t-shirt designer and artist. I use AI to help me create designs, but I rarely use AI out of the box. I don't often take an AI design and simply upload it. So that's not the way I do things. Uh, The copyright is one of those issues that I'm concerned about in that regard. And this latest, uh, this new kind of synth ID things makes me a little bit more nervous and a bit more aware and careful. Um, Am I comfortable taking elements of an AI design and using that in mind? Yeah, with certain caveats and in certain situations. But by far the safest situation would be that you're using AI as a uh, inspiration. You're using it to progress your 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 design to to give you options to help you visualize things, and then you're using elements of that and putting them together for your finished design. So you're not going straight from AI to finished design uh, or to uploadable design, but you're using AI in the process and helping you get to better designs. Um, That's obviously the safest, safest way to do things. Um, Obviously a lot, a lot of people are are not doing that. They're using AI out of the box, you know, an uploadable design and and running with it. Um, But I think it's worth considering these possibilities and where your risk tolerance is and whether you, want to run that risk of, uh, you know, potentially something coming back and biting you in the future, whether that's a platform risk or a legal risk or a, I don't know, general kind of consumer risk of like anti-AI sentiments coming back and then being, you know, people can say, oh, that's definitely an AI generated image. I don't want to have anything to do with you, that kind of thing. So worth considering, um, I think the, the safest model is that you use AI to help you get there and certainly like using AI as a kind of clip art kind of generator, you know, I need this illustration, but I don't know how to visualize it. So using AI to help you get there with that stuff is good, but yeah, uh, using it out of the box is risky. And increasingly we're seeing the technology come that makes this even potentially riskier. Now I don't want to like scare anyone. Like I, I use AI and I, have software that incorporates it. Um, I just think it's worth thinking about these things wherever you're at and uh, considering where the future is for this stuff. I do think in general, everyone seems to be getting more and more comfortable with AI, whether that's with ChatGPT, whether that's in image generation or obviously with videos and stuff now as well. but that doesn't mean that there can't be like a backlash against it or there can't be some of these potential banana skins in the future that could slip you up. Uh, no pun intended on that banana joke. Um, okay, I'll leave that one there. Just wanted to to uh, let you know. So yeah, there's this watermark that appears on official images generated in Gemini, but it's also this secret watermark that you can't see, uh, which is... Um, which exists as well. And yet, just finally, actually, uh, worth pointing out that this was with Google's new uh, Nano Banana Pro. Um, I think it's the case with any AI image generation from Google that it has this synth ID thing in it. Uh, but I did check other models. Um, actually, there's there's a couple of ways of, of checking these things. So there's 
there's Gemini, which you can use to check, which can determine if it's using synth ID. And then there's something called, I think it's called a CP2A, um, which can check open AI. Sorry, my uh, microphone dropped out uh, right around there. So yeah, it, it's called C2PA, uh, C2PA, and that checks uh, open AI images as well. So you can find a C2PA checker online. If you upload images that are generated via GPT, then that can verify that those are also AI generated. Um, but there are these unwatermarked uh, AI models as well, previous AI models. So things like Flux, uh, which is unwatermarked and which if you check that against Gemini or C2PA, there is no way that that can detect that it is AI generated. They're not able to check that because the watermark has to be embedded in the in the model, in the generation from the get-go. And uh, that's been a relatively recent development from the big players, from Google and from OpenAI. I'm not sure if any others are actually using uh, this watermarking technology yet, uh, but just wanted to point that out and kind of, uh, yeah, make sure that's clear. Like the, this is not across all models. There are certain models like Flux, um, which don't have this watermarking technology built in, which means they're not detectable. Uh, you can't verify that those are AI generated. So uh, that's it really. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, that was just me wrapping it up. But yeah, hope you got something out of that. Just wanted to share a few thoughts about this watermarking technology, where it might lead us in the future, how things stack up at the moment. And uh, yeah, just share those thoughts. So let me know what you think and your thoughts below. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks. Bye.